Now, now that I've explained to you why it's challenging to come up with a precise value for the lowest effective de-icing temperature, let me give you some more background information that will hopefully help us to better understand how we can improve the performance of de-icers at colder temperatures. This graph shows you another comparison of the ice melting between salt, sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, and calcium chloride. This time we're comparing the ice melting at a very cold temperature of minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit and over a longer period of time. Very often when we measure ice melting on de-icers, we look at a fairly short period of time, say 60 minutes. And that's completely reasonable because often we want to know how well that de-icer is going to work in a short period of time. But we need to be a little bit careful. If we only look at how well the de-icer performs in a short period of time, we can be misled about the total amount of ice melting power that's available. Let me show you what I mean. If you look at the far left side of this graph at a period of about one hour, we see the conventional picture that we're used to. Namely, we see very little melting action from salt, but a substantial amount of melting action from calcium chloride and magnesium chloride. So we might be tempted to stop at this point and simply conclude that salt is ineffective at cold temperatures because it has no ice melting power, whereas calcium and magnesium chloride have a lot of ice melting power. But note what happens if we look at longer periods of time. If we look at 24 hours, you can see that salt has caught up to magnesium chloride. And if we wait for 48 hours, we see salt has not only caught up to calcium chloride, but it has far surpassed it. So, the take-home lesson here is that the reason salt loses its effectiveness at colder temperatures is not because it lacks ice melting power. Indeed, as cold as 5 below zero, salt has got substantially more ice melting power than our commonly used low temperature de-icers, magnesium chloride and calcium chloride. We see that the reason salt loses its effectiveness is simply because it starts working very slowly at cold temperatures. So this gives us the key, then, to improving the low temperature effectiveness of de-icers. What we need to do is make salt work faster. And one of the ways that we can do that is by a process called pre-wetting. We have many years of field experience now that pre-wetted salt works faster than dry salt. But there's been little effort to actually quantify this. So we recently have been running tests to measure the effect that pre-wetting has on the ice melting rate of salt at cold temperatures. The graph that you're looking at now shows you the results of our recent experiments. We measured the ice melting speed on a 50-50 mixture of rock salt and various pre-wetting liquids, including liquid magnesium chloride, liquid salt brine, and some hot mixes of salt brine with magnesium chloride. We subtracted the ice melting component from the liquid from the total amount of ice melt, and that enables, enabled us to look at the effect of the pre-wetting liquid on the ice melting speed of just the rock salt itself. And this is what you see in this graph. That first blue line at the bottom shows you the ice melting speed of plain rock salt at minus 4 Fahrenheit. The next line further up shows you salt pre-wetted with plain salt brine. And note that just pre-wetting salt with plain salt brine gives you a substantial increase in the ice melting rate. It increases the ice melting speed by a factor of about three over the first three hours. If you look at the blue line all the way at the top, then you can see the ice melting speed of salt pre-wetted with magnesium chloride brine. And we see that magnesium chloride accelerates the salt ice melting much more than plain salt brine it increases the salt ice melting rate by a factor of about seven over the first three hours. And then those two lines in the middle are salt pre-wetted with our hot mixes. And what we see there is that the more magnesium chloride we have in our hot mix, the faster the salt melts ice. Now, 50-50 blends of salt and pre-wetting liquid are much higher than is typically used in uh, highway de-icing. So I wanted to also look at more typical pre-wetting liquids, uh, pre-wetting rates that we use for highway de-icing. So this graph shows you the results of those experiments, where we measured the effect of pre-wetting rates between about 8 and 64 gallons per ton. 
And what we saw was that even at these more typical pre-wetting application rates, we still see a significant increase in the ice melting speed at cold temperatures. We see a greater increase in the ice melting speed at our higher application rates, but even at application rates as low as about 8 gallons per ton, we still see a significant increase in ice melting speed. We see an increase of about 30 to 40 percent compared to dry salt. So in conclusion then, what can we say about the lowest effective de-icing temperature of pre-wetted salt or anything else? Well, we saw that it's difficult to identify a uh, precise number as the lowest effective de-icing temperature because at the moment we don't have a standard industry definition of what lowest effective temperature means. However, we saw some background information to help us better understand what low temperature performance means and how we can improve it. We saw that plain salt has got a great deal of ice melting power, even at temperatures as cold as 5 below zero Fahrenheit. And that the reason it is ineffective at these temperatures is because it melts ice too slowly. So anything we can do to speed the salt up will essentially lower the effective de-icing temperature. And we saw that one way we can do that is by pre-wetting. That pre-wetting will cause salt to work faster at lower temperatures that if we pre-wet with uh, a magnesium chloride or a calcium chloride, I didn't talk specifically about calcium chloride, but it works the same way that magnesium chloride does, we can see increases of up to seven times faster than we do, uh, we can see up to seven times faster ice melting than we do with dry salt. And we saw that the greater the proportion of magnesium chloride or calcium chloride in our pre-wetting liquid, the greater the speed of the de-icing. So I hope that helps you better understand uh, how to extract better performance from your de-icing salt at cold temperatures and better understand lowest effective de-icing temperature. If you have more questions, please let me know.